Hi. My name is JC McCauley. I'm Naisha McCauley, and, and you're, you're watching, watching AccessTV.org. Hey, good morning, good morning, happy Monday. Yes, I'm back. Um, as you know, everybody should take a vacation. Like I did, I enjoyed myself. I took more time this year. Anyway, you know, it's gonna be hot today. So, um, I tell you, just enjoy your day. And if you didn't get a chance to take a vacation, take some time off, get a vacation, relax, then go back to work. And you know it's Monday, we got to get back to work, get back in the grind of things. And I'm so happy to have these two gentlemen with me. I tell you, it's a father and son. And um, actually, if I could have fit his daughter in here, I would too interview also. But anyway, I'm here with Joe Young, president of Young Studios, and his son, Kyle Young. And um, I'm going to just say, they both did the movie Diamond Rough. But we're going to talk about that later. And I'd just like to welcome you to my show, Make It Happen. Welcome. Hey, it's a hey, pleasure to be here. Yeah, All right. to be here. Yeah. And Joe, I've known you since um, my sister was working for CRT. That's right. That's how I knew you. Yeah, Paula. Yes. And Big you, up to Paula. Yes. Shout out to Paula. Hey, hey Paula. Up, Wherever Paula. you are. Yeah, yeah. We love you. And Ma. Definitely. Um, just say... Just take the time to appreciate everybody, but mm. I want to go back and welcome you too. So, when you were working at CRT, what made you want to get out of CRT? That's a, that's a and great you, question. Yeah, that, that's yeah. an interesting question uh, to start off. Um, I was the community arts director um, for CRT, Community Renewal Team, uh, which is one of the largest social service agency, privately owned social service agency in Connecticut. Um, I was doing my thing with the arts, and then Paul Puzo asked me to join oh, okay. the team of, of CRT, wow. and uh, learned a lot under Paul, and learned a lot, you know, working in social service, and then, you know, it was time for me to, well, I've always, in 89, I started the Joe Picture Show, my nonprofit, mm -hmm. so I was simultaneously doing um, the Joe Picture Show, and I would do my full-time work at CRT, Wow. and then... Um, started to do the Diamond Rough movie, and I had to expand, so it was time to uh, go to the next level. Mm -hmm. But I learned a lot at um, CRT about arts and how the uh, nonprofit world, uh, you know, really worked. Mm. Yeah, um, my son went to um, one of your programs That's right. a while back ago. Wow. Um, doing cartoon. Wow. Yes, and that was very long ago. Uh, you were on Main Street. Mm-hmm. And that was a good experience. And then you had the cameras and everything else going. And mm -hmm. then you started doing the films and everything mm -hmm. else. Uh, what made you want to do Scruples? Well, I started Scruples um, in 19, I think it was 87 or somewhere around there, 1987. But I've always did cartoons. And I wanted to come up with a comic property where I could express myself through these youthful hip characters and I created the Scruples comic strip and I remember I went to New York I was 21 I got syndicated and matter of fact the first person I called was Stan McCauley oh I don't my know if Stan remembers yeah I don't know if you remember <laughs> Stan I said Stan I just got my work syndicated by a religious news service RNS mm. out of out of Manhattan wow but Stan McCauley was the first one I spoke to Stan McCauley's the one that got me into uh television Mm -hmm. with public access. So Stan McCauley has been very influential in my career. Yeah. That's why I blame him for all the left curves. <laughs> and I know you have a lot of them, huh? Yeah, but good. But yes. there's always great opportunities and miracles that come through adversity. Mm, 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 mm. So what's really hard, you know, working... Um, and then going to your... doing your cartoon things as well. Oh, no. Well, I'm one of those people who have been fortunate that I do what I love. So yeah. even though I was at CRT, it was a regular job to me, 
I would have done some of that things even if I wasn't getting paid because I was dealing with the arts. I was dealing with artists. I enjoy the administrative part of things. I enjoy the producing. So I'm just one of those people who have been very fortunate uh, to have work that lines up with my passion. Wow. Oh, my goodness gracious. So um, in the time, how many hours actually did you put into? But I still do. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm 14, 15. Wow. Some days you don't go to sleep. Depending well, on the project. Yeah, remember that, folks, when you want to do your own thing, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, the, but, but, but if you're passionate about it, the hours really are insignificant. Oh, wow. You can't wait to wake up to work on it. That, yeah. Well, that's a good thing. That's a good yeah. thing. Um, what I want to do is right now, I want to bring your son in. Mm -hmm. So I know you helped your father into um, the scruples when he started, right? How did you feel about that? If you did. In Scruples? Uh, yeah, the one on um, Main Street in Hartford. Did, did your son ever do that? Uh, well, Scruples was a comic strip yeah. early yeah. in the 80s because he was born. Yeah, I was just probably a little kid. A little Scruples. kid, then. Okay. But there's been a lot of Scruples stuff. Animation and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. I guess when I got a little bit older, um, the animation, I probably helped out with that a little bit more. Um, you're talking about Young Studios on Main Street? Yeah. Yeah, I think we did some Scruples stuff there. We started doing like a lot of video. For the craftery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You ran then. the camp. You were the camp. Yeah, I guess I've always camp. been around like since I was little doing and learning. So okay. it probably got, I probably started doing more as I got older and stuff okay. like that. So when I was younger. But I was always in it from a kid. So what age did you start, actually? Oh. Eight, nine? I was yeah, probably yeah. around since I was like six. Six, six? Yeah, really? Just, like, just helped with, you wow. know, I can only help so much. But yeah, I probably started really helping when I was probably like 13, maybe. Like mm. maybe contributing stuff that actually went out, you know. Probably around that age. Oh, that's good. And actually, you you're doing your own thing too. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're just <laughs> a creative person. We I feel like we always want to do something, some yeah. sort of project, just to keep it keep it going for and, yourself or whatever. Yeah, and um, I understand what I'm gonna just mention right now is um, you have your own TV thing going on, right? Yeah, I do like an online TV video thing called TKY TV, where I kind of kind of like your show, where I I'll interview artists and creative people and put that out and also play independent music videos too. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like community, local, underground TV uh -huh. programming for people. So do you have a team with you? Um, well, you do your I, do it a lot, I do a lot of it myself, but there's oh, always gosh. people around. There's always, you can never really do anything fully yourself. So yeah, you got that right. You know, but um, a lot of it I do. I, I just started it. It was just a way for me to put music out and help others promote their stuff too right. at the same time. So. Oh. Okay. So it's definitely not just me. But, yeah. And he does music too? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, I make hip hop music. I'm a producer and rapper. Um, so I do my music. And then I also am in a group called Young with my brother and my sister. Mm, so, okay. and then, yeah. Tank Sauce and Tank Page. Tank Sauce, yep, and Paige Young. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And Tank Sauce is quite um, oh, interesting. He's an interesting gentleman. Yeah, um, yeah, he's great. He plays he's an great. instrument too. Yeah, he, he great plays dances. The, um, trumpet. And he break dances as yes. well. So, yeah. And uh, when I met him is when he started break dancing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah start, it was so yeah, long ago. He started off doing it. Yeah, the break dancing, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was watching this guy break dance, and I didn't even know that was your son. Oh, mm -hmm. my goodness, Joe. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I've known Joan for a long time, too, oh, also. Okay. And um, actually, you have a fantastic family. Thank you. And um, what do you want to pursue most? Me personally? Yes, uh, Kyle. I lo my passion is music. I, I love it. I just it's maybe because I don't get to do it as much. So I, I but I've always loved music. But I still have a passion for video and film too. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like them both, and I like doing music videos and stuff like that. So they they often go hand in hand. But if I had to pick one thing that I wanted to do forever, I'd probably pick music, <laughs> hip, hip hop specifically. Because I love music myself. Yeah, it's yes. just it feels good to create it. It feels good to listen back to it. You know, create something from nothing. Mm. That's like the process. Um, Joe, mm -hmm. I want to ask you because I'm doing you guys both at the same time. Um, I know you did a movie, Diamond Rough, mm -hmm. which we're going to get into later on in the second half. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what made you want to do the the movie? Well, how I, did uh, you get to all these people? <laughs> well, first of all, I, I wrote a book called yes. Diamond Rough, right? Uh, which again, I had a left curve. Uh, I was in, doing a competition with kids, and we lost them fairly. And instead of me getting mad and bitter, I said, let me write a book. Mm -hmm. But 
let me put characters around the situation so Diamond Rough, this con man, really has nothing to do with why I wrote the book Diamond Rough. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I said to Kyle, um, okay, what, 2007 or eight, seven, yeah. eight? I said, Kyle, you know what? You know, because I always had this passion to show people, um, to, to help guide them and inspire them, because I didn't always have people to guide me. And I said, I'm going to take this book and I'm going to turn it into a major feature film. You know, and we went on YouTube and we started to tell our story through YouTube episodes. Oh, wow. And good. so I did it. But what I didn't count on was the recession. Oh, okay. You know, I said I would get the project done in maybe two years. It took us five years to do it, but we never gave up. We were tenacious, and we, we got it done, and we got a, it distributed internationally. Um, and so uh, we got a lot of people, because when you do something, I'm just an ordinary guy, but I put myself in great situations. Mm -hmm. And when you do stuff like that, it naturally attracts the dreamers and different people like that. At one time, we had maybe... Uh, a few hundred people involved with the project. Wow. But it was the first major feature film shot in Hartford by a local person of, I mean, Stan and those guys have done, you know, films, and I learned from those guys, um, but I think it was the first one that got a major distributor. Mm. Um, but again, <clears throat> um, you, you, you hang around people who've done it, and I was, you know, again, I keep bringing Stan's name. Okay. Yeah, Stan. Very, Stan's very, a man. He was very influential. Yes, he with, is. Some people say, well, you did the movie, but that stuff started back in 86 when right. I was doing scruples and everything. I learned the drawing, storyboards, you know, mm -hmm. bringing my son Kyle. Kyle's the technical person, and, you know, Kyle even took a semester off to help with the film. He went mm -hmm. back and got his degree at Columbia yes, College. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. We'll be right back, okay? We'll talk more yep. with Joe Young and Kyle Young. Yo, I went all the way up to the 12th grade, you know, and I was skipping school. I was selling. I was out there doing bad things because I thought I could just get the fast way. My aunt knew she came busting at me, came hitting, knocking me upside the head, telling me, you know, to stay in school because they told her, they called in. Parents, you know, you got to keep on top of your kids because at the end of the day, they got to stay in school for the future for y'all and your family to grow. Stay in school is a big deal. Well, welcome back. I'm here with Mr. Joe Young and Kyle Young. And uh, Joe Young is president of, is, uh, president of Joe Young Studios. Now, you know I got that right. Ooh. So, <laughs> and um, his son, I tell you, he's into a lot of things. He's got his own music company called Young Studios. It's your... Uh, it's Young Music, am I correct, yeah, Kyle? Yeah, it's a group with me and my siblings, yeah, uh, okay. Young Music is a, is a uh, brand. All yes. right, I know before we were talking about the movie Diamond Rough, and if you have not got an opportunity to see the movie, I think it's a very nice movie. I, I love the movie. Thank and, you. And uh, I got a kick out of Scott Haney. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's uh, something else. How did, how did you get him, real quick? He just reached out, reached out. Really? And we got him. Oh. Um, 
and, and when you do stuff like that, it does um, attract, you know, different people. Mm -hmm. And again, it was our first major feature film, so it, it was just great, the support that we did get from Hartford yeah. and its people. And you at the Hartford Public Library. I said, let me go check out this movie. Because no matter how many times you watch it, you just enjoy it. Because mm -hmm. I saw it when you had the big premiere mm -hmm. uh, that was downtown. Or the Bushnell? Was... Yeah, the Bushnell. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, we had about 3,000 people show up today. Yeah. yeah. It was amazing. Yes, and and uh, the characters were there. Some of the characters were yep, there. Some of the actors. I don't know if Fred Starr was there, though, was he? No, he got stuck in um, L.A. Actually, there was a shooting at the airport, so oh, he couldn't get his flight. Oh, no. Oh, but my Dennis goodness. White was there. Snoop from The yes. Wire was there. Yes. You know, Michael Collier couldn't make it. Okay. So Isn't he a comedian? Hmm? Isn't he a comedian? Yes, he is. As a matter of yeah. fact, he's in with George Clinton. He's in a lot of movies now. Oh, wow. Yeah. He did some with Kendrick Lamar with the George Clinton. Piece. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Gracious. Oh, yeah. Michael Collier. And he's doing a, a major uh, uh, play that will be touring around the country. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, if you don't know, this was all filmed in Hartford. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Downtown. And surrounding towns. Yeah. Connecticut. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and Kyle, you were at the end. I'm like, okay, Kyle, uh, go yeah. ahead. Uh -huh. um, what I want to do is I want to talk about what you do in between now of Diamond Rough. You got the camp going. You got everything else going. Can you just tell people, you know, if well, they're interested? Well, I'll make it yeah. abbreviate. Well, you know, uh, we have a summer camp for mm -hmm. kids that goes until August 11th where kids learn multimedia and performing arts. And what are the ages? Uh, nine to nine to fifteen. Okay. Uh, then we um, we're trying to help the kids with with their uh, music, um, hip hop music group Young. Mm -hmm. uh, also managed with Maurice Star NK Five, a boy band out of Florida. Okay. And uh, you know my own projects and my biggest project I'm working on I'm writing a book called If, which is a survival guide for artists. So if you're an artist mm. and you come across the left curve, you got to deal with haters, you're trying to do an investment package, <laughs> you're trying to do social media, um, you're trying to write a book, how do you make an Amazon bestseller? Mm. And so I, I compiled it in a book. It's kind of like, you know, if you, you're in the woods and you get bitten by a snake, what do you do? If you get bitten, my thing is if yes. you get sued, what do you do? If yeah. you're trying to raise money, how do you do it? So it's called If. It's mm -hmm. an artist's survival guide. Okay. So do you all do you also mention about grants and permits? And oh, yeah, like yeah. That? We even have like a directory of all the arts council and grants in there from a federal, regional, and local level. Mm, yep, mm. it's all in there. Oh, that's great. And I noticed that um, when I was talking to you earlier, way back when, you were in a, like a meeting, business meeting. Mm -hmm. And that's very important to have, you know, business meetings mm -hmm. when, you, when you have the, the things that you have going on, I'm talking about the Diamond Rough movie, cartoons and your um, filmmaking, producing, your writing, and, you know, do you do any public speaking too also along with that? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I do a lot of cartooning workshops, but, you know, I've, I've you know, I, I've been asked to speak at, I've spoken at different graduations and different things like that. Okay. So I enjoy, I, you know, enjoy public speaking mm -hmm. when I get the opportunity. Oh, okay. Now, I notice when you go to Facebook, you'll see a whole lot of things about you because I noticed that you did do um, one, a uh, couple of uh, public speaking, excuse me. But um, you find a lot about people and what they do and what they have been doing. Mm -hmm. And um, what's the most thing that you want to do now? I know you, you, uh, you are you going to write a second book? Uh, do another movie, I mean? Well, like I said, I got this book, If. Um, we, we have a... Um we're working on a PBS show within mm -hmm. K Five, which I'll be the executive producer of the show, okay. and you know my kids will be you know producers on the show and in, in my team. Uh, but Diamond Rough more and want to get into more films and you know. But actually, what I want to do is probably teach and write. Teach and write. But all these other things always I try yes. to get out the game, but it always pulls me back in. Oh my goodness you know? gracious! Wow. So, but I enjoy it though, so I have no complaints. So I don't know, Cal, if you want to talk yeah. about. About what others' goals or yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, really, I just wanna, I just wanna keep the music thing going. You know what I mean? Like, 
the this young stuff is taking off like it's only been mm-hmm. maybe like six months since we've been doing it but like you said before like over a million plays so we've been reacting to korean pop videos and it's for every reason wow that takes off and then mm-hmm. we kind of lace our stuff in between so we're actually gaining real fans for music so it's just cool to work with the family too and just make good music and you know figure stuff out and and but um yeah, I'm, I have an album that I'm working on as okay. far as music that I'm, it's almost done. It's pretty much done. It's like 95% done. So just always trying to create new stuff. And then, yeah, if I can take this TKY TV thing to the next level, maybe, like you said, interview mm-hmm. celebrities and stuff like that. That would mm-hmm. be cool. Just, yeah, that would be nice to mm-hmm. interview celebrities. Yeah. yeah I find yeah. them very interesting. But, you know, people that are local are just as important, too. So, you know, give, <laughs> people, give people that platform, too, because... I think it empowers people and then it comes back to you. Uh-huh. People really appreciate when you interview them because they might not get to get interviewed normally and stuff like that. So I'm just always trying to create new content mm-hmm. and just express myself and work with other people and yeah. help other people. Joe, mm-hmm. and, and thanks for that, for answering that question. Oh, okay. Joe, and um, I know you had a summer camp, but are you going to have any kids in your, your next film? Well, like I said, I'm working on a PBS special. Right. It's a kids' TV show. Okay. Uh, but again, um, when I do movies in Hartford, mm-hmm. I always uh, try to include a lot of local people to give them an opportunity as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, would you ever want to go to Hollywood? Actually? Well, we've been to Hollywood. I mean, we've been on the set of like New Edition movie. Oh, really? There are different things like that. Um, been on the set of Steve Harvey's show with um, NK5. So, you know, been there, especially, you know, working with Maury Starr, that opened up a lot of doors for me in the, uh, the, in the, um, on that level of, of entertainment. Mm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, Kyle, I want to ask you, how do you feel about your father being like, kind of like a mentor to you and helping you, you know, do things and get you started and helping you and your your sister and your other and your brother? Yeah, uh, I guess I just feel lucky, you know, just like some people don't even have a dad at all. So just to have one that's at least there and then to be motivated doing his own thing is just I just feel fortunate for that to have that as a role model, you know, to someone, you know, just even to ask questions sometimes is, you know, some people don't have that. So I feel fortunate because he understands, you know, I could be like, I want to do this, and he might give me a hard time about it, but it's probably because he's done it already, rather than <laughs> just, he doesn't believe in it, you know, so uh, it's good having someone that uh, understands and has been through it, and people maybe told him not to do something, and he did it anyway, so it's just, mm. it, it's comforting. Okay. But it's, is it difficult um, when you work uh, with your, your kids? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. And sometimes it can be difficult because yeah. you still have to separate you know, I'm your dad, you know, I might put some things on him because I'm your dad, do it because I'm your dad, Mm -hmm. you you know, and so I feel blessed in the sense that we're still working because most families can't work together No, because they can't separate those dynamics. Mm. That's quite interesting. Business and personal. Wow. And like sometimes, like Kyle said, I might say, I don't know about that. I'm not trying to discourage him, but I've been there before and as a parent you don't want to see your kid have any unnecessary pain you know what i'm saying but again at the same time you know he's got to fly because you've taken to flight before too oh, okay that's true um kyle i got a question for you when you were i believe you were going to school out in um, massachusetts how was that compared to uh, well, I went to school, yeah, for, uh, UMass for two years, yeah. um, and that was cool. It was whatever, but I think it changed when I went to school in L.A. So I went to yeah. film school in California, so that I'm was, go to that UMass was okay. I wasn't really, I feel like I wasn't really doing anything, mm-hmm. but then when I went to L.A., like, it opened up because it, it made more sense. I didn't have a major when I was at UMass, mm-hmm. but then when I went to L.A., I started doing film, and that's where I kind of find my, found myself more, and, it, you know, the freedom of being away from home was nice and then just a different culture and I got to meet new people so I oh. think that that opened me up a lot more okay to everything. we'll be right back yeah. <laughs> with Jill Young and Kyle Young
Yo, I started skipping school at a young age. I started skipping because I had fun running around stealing cars, running the streets with the gangs, running around my friends, doing things I ain't supposed to be doing. My grandmother would have found out, man, that would have been it for me. But instead, you know, I went back to school. I stayed successful. So at the end of the day, keep your kids in school. It's a big deal. Welcome back, welcome back everybody. Um, and I noticed the time that's up there. So what I like to do is I wanna welcome you back, Joe Young, and also Cal Young, but I got a question for you, Joe. Yes, ma'am. Um, what type of advice would you give somebody, would you give someone who's interested in, in doing um, like artists, cartoonists? And well, I've, um, it depends, that's a, that's a little question, it depends on what your intent is, what your goal is. Mm -hmm. If you want to just do art for the sake of art, just find what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to make it as a career, also, um, you know, find what you're passionate because that'll get you through the tough times. But anytime I speak, I always say uh, one thing. Um, if you run after success, success runs away. Yeah. But if you run after excellence, success runs towards you. So if you, you, you have to master your craft and become the best at it, that you, the best at it in the world, and the world comes to you. Mm -hmm. I always hear people say, I can't make it because I'm little old Harford. No. If you're the best at what you do, even if you're in Harford, the world will come to you. Mm -hmm. You know, and people don't understand that. They go after the money, the fame. That's not how you do it. You just become the best at what you do. Right. You know, I could have like, say, hey, uh, 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 just say I had a dog that could talk. I don't care if I was in Boise, <laughs> Idaho or Jerusalem. People come to see this dog that can talk. So you master what you do and the rest mm -hmm. takes care of wow. itself. When I hear people say, I'm doing it because I want to get it. Or somebody comes to me on a regular basis, Joe, I want to do my movie. We're going to make a lot of money. That tells me to go the other way. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do it. Now, if I see somebody who says, I love this craft. I want to be the best at it. I want to do something that's never been done before. Right. And that's what I'm attracted to. And that's oh. who I that's collaborate with. And that's something that Prince, Prince, because I admire Prince. Oh yeah. Before his death, he's always said, "Master your craft." Master, that's the key, and the yeah. rest takes care yeah, of itself. Yeah, like good. If you become the best. Yes. And you wait for God to touch it. That's right. So I don't care how bad you are, how good you are. <laughs> like Tyler Perry said, "If God doesn't give the increase, it's not going to happen." Mm. Interesting. That's interesting. Wow. Oh my goodness. And um, for you and your your music background, Kyle, uh -huh. what advice would you give someone? Who's trying to do a group? Um, I would say um, just be consistent. I think mm -hmm. being consistent and creating content and taking your time and having the passion for it. I think I think if you have substance or passion or a reason behind something, that usually goes the furthest. But if you want to make it, I would. My advice would be just put that out there. You know, mm -hmm. just be consistent and show people what you do and. Just be the just be and the best. It, yeah. yeah. Just be just fo yeah, like you said. Focus on being great. You know. That's right. Do uh, something different too. Do something. Mm -hmm. different. Yes. Because yeah. yeah. I don't want to do the same thing everybody right. else is doing. Mm -mm. So um, that's why I enjoy what I do because mm -hmm. I, I try to make it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a regular talk show sometimes. And then you know, kind of good things, bad things, and people should ought to know what they should be doing. You know what they love to do. And um, we we're talking about jobs and stuff like that. And when, you, when you're doing your own thing, it's not like an everyday job you were saying, like, uh, oh, gosh, I got to get up and go to this job. You have to really love what you were saying earlier when we were talking and, and starting your own business. That's Being an entrepreneur, about. I mean, a lot of people fantasize about it. Mm -hmm. But it takes hard I work. I don't know if they truly understand, you, you know what I'm saying? The uh, hard work, the sacrifice, yes. the discipline the focus, mm. you, you know, um, is, is, is very difficult, um, but it can be done. A lot of people have succeeded, but um, you have to be a go-getter. Mm. That's true. That's you, true. You, you know, but I think, but the key is finding that passion. That'll help you get through it all. Oh, okay. 
Um, and for the viewers out there, um, can you let our viewers know about your connections, your other um, things that you're doing besides that your upcoming movie and the things that you want to pursue? Your contact information too also. Oh, oh, my contact, contact yeah. is real simple. You go to uh, www.joeyoung.org. Mm -hmm. That's where you can reach me, leave your information, phone number, and I, we'll get back in touch. I'll get back in touch with you. We'll get back in touch with you. Yeah. Uh, my calendar of events, where I'm going to be at. Yeah. Joe's a busy man, though. I enjoy it. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, it's busy, but um, again, when you're an entrepreneur, you got to do a lot of different things. And um, I just enjoy it, you know, again, because doing cartoons is one thing, teaching cartoons and then producing and then mm -hmm. managing boy bands and, you know, writing books. And I, I enjoy it. I just feel like a, a very blessed and favorite person mm -hmm. okay. when it comes to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the craft. Okay, yeah, you have a very, oh boy, you're very good at what you do. You got your kids into mm -hmm. it. Yeah, that's the best thing. Paige is here. I want to give a shout out to Miss Paige. Thank you for coming, mm -hmm. even though you went there supporting your father mm -hmm. and your brother. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, can you give our viewers, Kyle, the information for people to reach out to you? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, best way you can follow me on Instagram at the Kyle Young. Um, you can also, if you search Young Music on YouTube, um, that'd be cool. You could look at that. And also TKY TV on Facebook. Okay, yeah. Uh, and everybody, you find a lot of interesting stuff on TKY. Because um, I went back oh, really? and looked at it. Because I, I like to get a chance to look at what people have done, mm -hmm. what they're doing. And um, when's your next movie or book coming out? Next five years? The three years? Two years? No, one books year? are easy. I mean... Yeah. All the books, the TV show, that stuff is easier. But really? the movie was the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> it's because there's so many elements involved and in raising money is always hard. If you're an executive producer, you got to raise the money. Raising the money is the hardest part wow. of doing any project for me. Mm -hmm. The writing comes natural. That's easy. Um, getting distributed. But raising the money is always the most difficult part that I've seen. Wow. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um and uh, Maurice Starr, what did you actually learn from? He was very in, in, instrumental in getting a higher way of thinking, thinking really big. Um, he, he's just brilliant. When I did my domestic um, uh, negotiations, I didn't get the, I had lawyers and I didn't get the best deal. Yeah. It was almost like a disaster. <laughs> But I had Maurice come in, this gentleman with an eighth grade education. Really? Help negotiate my um, international deal. And he showed me a couple things, and it was amazing. I paid these lawyers $1,000, and Maurice Starr just did it on a strength, and he, he helped me do it the right way. Uh, again, you remember, here's a man who was a millionaire before he was 32. He's mm -hmm. a business and a creative genius. Uh, Billboard Music Producer of the Year, Songwriter of the Year. Wow. And so I, he, he showed me about the music business. He showed me about um, relationships in, in the industry. Mm -hmm. And so he was, he was very influential. He's still very influential to me. Mm -hmm. I learned so much from him. Now, in a business relationship, I know people have disagreements. What's the best way to handle that? Well, with Maurice Starr, we never had because to me, he was a teacher no. and I was a student. But in general? Oh, yeah, in general, with other people. You, know. you you have to go in first of all with people you like. Mm -hmm. That's the most. If you can't eat dinner with them or have breakfast, you shouldn't go into a business thing. But it's an even exchange of goods, and you know, and it's very difficult work with people because everybody's got their side. But what I look at is you know the outcome, who's doing what after, so right. you really know who has a pattern of success or. Uh, what, but but business relationships are very. It's like a personal relationship. It's, it's difficult. Yeah. So you just make it work. Okay. Yeah. Make it happen. Make it work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. Um, but when you're an entrepreneur, you're going to find a lot of relationships just don't work out. No one's right. No one's wrong. People uh -huh. just bring different things to the table, mm -hmm. and the exchange of goods become different. But don't get bitter mm -hmm. because you lose your focus and you get distracted. Yes. I love President Obama. When he gets stuff thrown at him, he just 
Yeah. Because it comes to terror. You don't hold on to grudges. You don't hold because you'll go nowhere. Yes. And you're going to be watching people on TV while you're sitting there. A lot of people have opened up their mouths and have destroyed their relationships. Wow. Oh my or, and that's why social media is dangerous, to be careful what you put out there. That's true. That's true. That's why I say, yes, okay, whatever. Wow. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I try not to give my opinion too much on social media, uh, also, but uh, I keep it clean. And you got to be careful. You got to check yourself. All of a sudden, when your phone stops ringing for business, you might have said something or done something. It's not always the other person. Wow. You oh, know, my goodness. So. That is nice to know. But anyway, I want to thank you, too, for coming on my show. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paige, also. And um, some tank sauce. Is, uh, mm -hmm. We'll probably see him again. Is mm -hmm. it going to be he's in your music, too, right, Kyle? Yeah, yeah, it's me, Paige, and yeah, Tank. Yeah, okay, yep. yeah. We have a video on YouTube, Pretty Solid Bop. Pretty solid about. Yeah, I gotta PBS. check that one out. Yeah, check that out. All right. Everybody have a beautiful day. Enjoy yourself. Be careful. Please be kind to everybody. That's what I have to say. And I want to say, Kyle, Joe Young, thank you for coming on Make It Happen. Much more success. And um, I'll be seeing you up there somewhere along with you when you when you oh, make yeah. it. Oh, yeah. No, thank so you. It's I'm nice. willing to help everybody out. All you do is help somebody out. Mm -hmm. you know? Comes back. Yep. And that's what I love to do. So I'll see you next time. I'll make it happen. Stay blessed. My name is Jay Stan McCauley, and uh, I do business as Light Source Productions. I provide professional services in the area of strategic video communications. Uh, first, what we do is we help you craft your message uh, using what I call the rule of the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. We do event documentation, uh, content acquisition, full-scale productions, um, editing, and, of course, distribution uh, through our social media television network. And with social media, uh, video is more important now than it has ever been. Uh, whether you're talking big business, small business, nonprofit, church, or just an individual. Uh, let's say you, you know you you plan uh, uh, you're planning an event, a wedding, whatever the case may be. But but let's say a big event, uh, but no video. And you spend all this time, all these hours, uh, to put this event on, and maybe a hundred, two hundred people attend the event. But more important than that is that thousands could attend by watching it on social media. But of course, you don't think about this until after the event is over. You can't afford not to capture it for social media. And despite what people think, I am affordable. Give me a call. Let's plan your next video project and share it with the world on my social media television network. I promise you that you will have the attention of one person, me.